Hello, Merry Christmas. Now, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so excited to be bringing you God's truth on this special day. Praise God. Now, we, we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ today. Isn't that amazing? So when, you, when you're doing all the celebration, I know, I know this year's celebration will kind of be limited because of the whole COVID-19. But listen, 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 listen. Set your heart to what God wants you to do. Don't set your heart on what's going on out there. Set your heart on what God wants you to do. That's why I'm sharing the things I'm sharing with you. See, we, we are talking about the seed of Abraham. And you are the seed of Abraham if you are born again. And because you are the seed of Abraham, Jesus came to give you life. And he came to give everyone life. That's why he says, he says the thief come to steal and to kill and to destroy. But he came that day, who? Those to, from whom the thief is stealing, killing and destroying. That they will have life. And how has he done this? Through his seed. We are the seed of Abraham. And because of us, the blessing of God has come to every family. So no member of your family should die this season. You hear me? Yeah. None. If you will stand in the gap, and I've told you what to do, take his word. That's what, see, when God instructs something, that's what he means. That's what it is. You, you, he's not telling you to pray two hours every day. For this purpose, this particular purpose, to spare your life and the life of your family members. This is what he said. Hold on to my word in Psalm 103 and verse 4. He who redeems thy life from destruction. That's what he does. And then you hold on to his word. Say, Lord, you said this. You know, when, when, when he said in Chronicles, say, believe in the Lord your God and you'll be established. And he says, believe in his prophets and you will prosper. What does that mean, believe in his prophets and you will prosper? See, because the prophet of God comes with the word of God. So when you believe that what this man is saying is from the Lord, he says you will prosper. How will you prosper? It's not the man that will make you prosper. <laughs> you know, sometimes people miss these things. And, and pastors use this to take advantage of people. Believe in the Lord your God and you will be extra. Believe his prophets. So when I tell you go and bring all your money and come and drop here, Believe me and you will prosper. No, nah, that's not necessarily what he's talking about. You see, when the prophet comes, how do you know a prophet? He's speaking the word of God. Now, what do I mean speaking? I'm not saying he's quoting Bible. I say he's speaking the word of God. He's speaking the mind of God. That's his job. Now, when he's doing that, it may not sound like what works or what agrees to your mind or your thinking. But that's where you understand that I've got to believe what this man is saying because I know him to be sent by God. And that's who a prophet is. In scripture, there's no senior or junior prophet. There's no first, first prophet. There is, you see, we, do you understand what I'm saying? The word of the Lord is in your mouth. That's what makes you a prophet. If the word of God is not in your mouth, you can't function as a prophet. So, so he, he is telling you now how to keep the blessing in your home. And I'm sharing this with you. If you believe what I've said, he says, you will prosper. It's as simple as that. What does it mean to prosper? You will have testimonies. You are not going to fall like the rest of the world. But you will have testimonies because you believe in his prophet. Now, what do you need to do? Because you believe, you take it back to the Lord and say, Lord, I, I, I believe what Pastor George just shared. And I want to find out more from you. Is there any specific thing you would have me do? And obey this one first. Now, when you obey this one, he, he will begin to take you deeper into your own specifics. And then he's going to bring, he will start bringing the blessing, hallelujah, you know, and, and, and causing it to be so in your life. I'm sharing with you how to hold back the hand of the enemy over your family. It's the same way you can bring financial blessing to them. See? How? You will teach them the word of God. You will be a light unto them. You will be a testimony unto them. And by your life, they will see that God is real. 
then they will believe what you say. That's why your conduct matters. You, you can't be living carelessly and say, eh, it doesn't matter, whatever they think they should think, God knows who I am. You can't say that. Because you'll be tampering with those whom God wants to use you to bless. Are you getting what I'm saying? God wants the farm, every family of the earth to be blessed. And you are the one whom he is going to use in your family. And you are the one whom he is going to use to get someone else in another family. That's why we preach the gospel. That's why we win souls. He wants to bless everyone. And, and like I was sharing with you yesterday, you are not going to walk into the trap of the enemy. No, no, no. You will not walk into the trap of the enemy. You are not going to follow those who have been marked for destruction. You remember Ezekiel or Jeremiah, one of the prophets. When they get married, then God says, hey, you can't marry from that place. Why? Because everyone in that place would die of grievous death. Now, he didn't know that. That everybody in that place has been marked for destruction. Just like God had marked Sodom and Gomorrah for destruction. Now, he, he innocently was thinking of marrying one fine lady from that place. And God said, you can't marry from there. Because everybody you see in that place, they will die grievous deaths. Think about it. So imagine he never heard from God. He goes on, he marries, and then something happens. A grievous death happens. Everybody's thinking, how can this thing even, how, from where? But see what the wisdom of God can do. And this is why we pray for people. This is why we intercede for our family members. Because you are the blessing of God. You are the hand of God of mercy to them. You are the hand of God. Now that's part of the thing. The blessing includes financial blessing, health, benefits, peace of mind. Every good thing that you can think about. The prosperity of your mind. The flowing of your mind to the possibilities of God in that situation. That is prosperity. You understand what I'm saying? That is prosperity. So no member of your family should ever be stranded. At any point, they will know what to do. You know, sometimes people call me up and say, Oh, Pastor, I'm in this kind of situation. What should I do? And immediately, the word of the Lord comes to me, or the wisdom of the Lord comes to me. And he says, do, tell him or how to do this and do this and do that. And I say, okay, do like this. Go, go do this, go do this, go do that, and it will be sorted out. Now, what is that? That is prosperity. You are never stranded. That is where it begins. If you don't see that happening in your life, then you're not prospering. You're not prospering. You're in a situation you just don't know what to do. You say, you say uh, why there is nobody to help me? Are you a believer? Yes, I'm a believer. In fact, I, I, I pray in tongues for two hours every day. Nah, you don't believe what you're doing. You, you can't be spraying in tongues for two hours every day and you don't have the solution to the issue yet. You're not praying. You're blabbing. Because when we speak in tongues, we are speaking the solution. He said we speak the wisdom of God when we speak in tongues. So I'm speaking the wisdom of God for two hours and then I cannot get the interpretation of what I'm saying. In every situation, this is what we look out for. We look out for the wisdom. That's why I said, Lord, and I told you the first prayer point to praise Lord, how should I pray about this matter? How should I pray about this matter? I can be going, La Brakasha Bragadusa, Reiki Ma Bragadusa. But in my mind, what's going on in my mind, Lord? What, 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 how do I go about this situation? What exactly do I do about it? I remember there, there, there's an issue I've been praying to the Lord about a, a decision. You know, to make, I've been praying because it, it concerns someone else. So I've been praying to the Lord about it for more than a year now. And I've just been praying and asking the Lord, Lord, this is really hurtful. Well, how do we go about it? How, 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 how do we go about this situation that it will produce your righteousness? And I've been praying concerning over a year until this morning. I wasn't even thinking about it. See, that's, what, that's how the Lord, I wasn't even thinking about it. The word of the Lord just came to me concerning this issue. 
This is how to go about it. Do this, do this, do this, do this. And then this is going to happen. I go, oh, praise God. I've been, I've been on this thing for over a year now. Now, when I mean over a year, I'm not saying every day, oh God, oh God, oh God. No, that's not what it means. The, the issue started over a year ago. Or rather, I got involved with the issue over a year ago. And, 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 and I've been on it, you know, because cause when, I, when I mean, I've been on it, because the situation hasn't changed yet. And I've been believing, you know, it'll cross your mind, and then when it crosses your mind, say, Lord, you've not, you've not answered me concerning this. You've not told me what to do. And, you know, if you don't tell me what to do, there's nothing I can do about it. And I can't even remember the last time I, 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 I thought about, maybe some weeks ago, that it crossed my mind. And then, just this morning, the word of the Lord came to me. He said, consigning that sin. That's why I always tell you this. Ask God. And when you ask God, make sure you know that you have asked him. Don't you say, oh, you say I've prayed about it. When did you pray about it? Like, mm, I used to pray about it. You've not prayed. When you've prayed about it, you will know you have prayed about it. And it doesn't mean every day we'll be praying. No, you see, when God hasn't answered yet, he hasn't answered. If you've not seen the answer, he hasn't answered yet. Now, of course, by, by knowledge, I can tell you he has answered. But it may take you a while to see the answer. Why? Precept must be upon precept. Line must be upon line. And then eventually when he brings you to the place, for, like what, what he told me now, he just gave me an instruction, do this, do this, do this. Now, there are certain things that have happened over time that will make me be able to do what he has just told me to do that possibly I wouldn't have been able to do at that time. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Now, the solution to a problem might be you meeting someone that you have never met. So you pray, oh God, help me solve this issue. And the Lord answers you, okay. And then the Lord begins to navigate your journey, begins to navigate your journey. Two months down the line, you meet somebody and you establish a relationship. You know, the kind of relationship that you can call the person up and say, I need this help concerning this issue. And the person will know, oh, yeah, I, I know you. I, I can't deny you this help. You know what I'm talking about? It doesn't happen because you've seen somebody. See? So he answered it from the day you prayed. But he's now walking you to the answer. That, that's what, you know, somebody said, oh God, I've been praying over this thing for like three years now. You've not answered me. Who told you he has not answered? Relax. So you pray over your family members. You pray that salvation will come to them. So that many more of you will be the seed of Abraham in that family. Hallelujah. Closing up the gap of the blessing. Praise God. And listen, every evil that is coming on the earth in this season, you are marked already. And your household is marked already because of you. It, you will hear of it, but you will not find it in your house. Praise God. I just wanted to pray. Thank you, Father. Lord Jesus, as we celebrate Christmas today, we remember the reason you were born. Your ministry on earth was to give us life, and it is still the same ministry. So, Lord, even right now, I pray. Everyone who has been sentenced to death in any way by a medical condition or whatever it is, as they call on your name today, they call on your ministry and all that you came to do on earth, life is restored to their being. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I speak life to you right now. You will not die. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes, you will not die. You will not die. See, because you've listened to this broadcast right now, I'm holding you up as my family member. Praise God. You will not die. 
Lift up your hands now and receive the life of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Receive it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Merry Christmas. Enjoy your day. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.